Hey guys, today I'm going to show you around this 1996 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. This is the first generation C-Class and this is the C220 model. So starting with the exterior styling, you can see it has the classic Mercedes uh, radiator grille and hood star. Very classy look. On the side we have the 8-hole alloy wheels. I believe they're 15 inch. Very small car. This, is a, this car weighs just over 3,000 pounds. Over here we have the C220 badge and of course a Mercedes logo. Overall it's a very beautiful looking car. I like the way the W202 looks. All right, so now I'm gonna show you uh, inside the car. But first to unlock the doors, we do have a remote. So you just press this button right in the middle, you point it at the rear view mirror, and those two lights flash to let you know that the doors are unlocked. A lot of older Mercedes have broken receivers, so it's pretty amazing that this one still works. <clears throat> So opening up, you can see the interior. This is a very nice looking door panel here. You have your wood and vinyl trim and your controls for the power seats and the headrest. Power headrest is over here. And that still works too. Very simple door panel, but looks very elegant for the time. And before I show you around the interior, I'm gonna start up the car and open up the hood for you. starts right up. So I'm going to show you underneath the hood before I get started on the interior. You got a red hood latch here. This is the engine, the 2.2 liter Pretty small engine, but it gets very good gas mileage, especially on the highway. It's covered in, uh, I guess someone spilled oil on this engine, it's like dried up oil. But overall, this example is in very nice shape. Runs like a dream. So let's climb back inside. I already showed you the door panel. Before we climb in, this is what the seat, these are the, the seats, very comfortable seats. Surprisingly, they're pretty plush. Uh, it is a vinyl trim. This one does not have the leather seats, but it's still better than cloth in my opinion, more comfortable. So when you're inside, you can notice it's actually pretty quiet in here, very well insulated. And um, the interior is very nice as well. You can see you have wood trim above the dashboard, which I think is very uh, elegant. You can see the Mercedes hood star from up front. Here's your gauge cluster. Uh, obviously you have your coolant temperature and your gas gauge and a exterior temperature. Uh, warning lights, this one has a coolant light on and the coolant is full and the engine doesn't overheat when you drive it for extended periods of time. So I think it's just a coolant level sensor. So yeah. Um, Speedometer goes up to 140. I'm not sure how fast this car actually goes, being that it only has 145 horsepower. Uh, that's your tack and your your uh, clock right there. This is your steering wheel. Looks a lot like other Mercedes steering wheels from the time. That's your horn. And your headlight switch, of course. Parking brake release. And here in the the dashboard, you can see it's very clean looking. This one has a uh, fake metal trim. It's plastic, but it's not too bad. Um, you have your switch for your power headrests in the rear, which, you know, I'll demonstrate. The switch is only to put them down. You can't put them up with the switch like in some other models. So you can see if you put the headrest up, oops, put the headrest up, and you flip the switch, 
it'll go down right from the front seat. Pretty convenient if you want better visibility after people were sitting in the back. Let me just close that door. And the other switch up here is for your door locks. You do have your climate controls. This is for your fan speed. You can adjust your temperature. And your, uh, your mode setting, of course. Turn it off, you just turn the fan all the way down. Here's your radio. Um, I'm having trouble putting in the code in this radio since the battery was just replaced. Um, you're supposed to enter the code with the numbers and then press SC, but for some reason it's not really working. So, can't show you the radio right now. Right below the radio you have cassette storage for your cassette collection. You open just like that, and when you have a cassette in there, these uh, white lights turn red. And again, I don't own any cassettes, so I can't really show you that. You have a storage compartment right here, coated in this thick wood trim. You can see on the sides, you, you can feel like it's it's got wood. You can feel it's real wood. It's amazing. Most new cars don't have real wood anymore. But this overall this is just a very elegant looking interior. Of course, you have your gear shift knob. This one is leather wrapped with a Mercedes logo on top. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then you can manually select your gears, third and second, of course. I'm gonna put on my parking brake so the car doesn't roll forward. You got your window controls, of course. And your power mirrors. I don't think I need to demonstrate that. In here you have a cubby for a cup holder. This is probably the first 90s Mercedes to have a cup holder. This one doesn't have the insert, but you can still put a drink in here. But again, it's a very nice interior, very pleasant to, uh, to be in, very clean and elegant. Up here you have a sunroof with a glass portion. And uh, this is how you open the sunroof. And if you push the switch, you can pop the sunroof up like that. You have your switch for your reading lights. That side is out. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I guess I'll climb in the back and show you the back seat. There's not a whole lot to go over back there. Oh, before I forget, speaking of the windshield wipers, check this out. There's only one wiper. Very interesting uh, hallmark of old Mercedes models. Even my W140 doesn't have that. Here in the back seat, you don't have a whole lot of room. Then again, I am six foot and the seat is to my current driving position. I have enough leg room back here can, being that the car is so small. And you get a better view of the front interior. Again, very simple and elegant. I love the interior in this car. Very well finished as well. But back to the back seat, you have a flip down area for, uh, I guess a cigarette lighter used to be there. I don't really know what that is. I haven't really been back here before. Again, you have your vinyl seat material. Door panel with the oddly placed window switch, but it works. Over here you have your armrest. And you can put your headrests up by hand. Your first aid kit, which this one still has. Looks like it's very old and probably never used. So yeah, that's the interior. Again, very nice, I love the interior. They did a great job, even with the original 90s C-Class, making it feel like an elegant car. Wheels look, look like they're in nice shape as well. Paid. I paid $1,700 for this example, which you can see how nice condition the car is in. There's no rust or anything. Just a little bit of dirt. Once I get it registered and get plates on it, I'll take it to the do-it-yourself car wash. This is the, uh, I think the trunk might be locked. Oh wait, no. That's the trunk. 
uh, you know, it's pretty deep. It goes pretty far back for such a small car. But overall, it's nothing too special. So there you have it. That is the W202 Mercedes-Benz C220. Makes a very nice commuter car. You can get these for very cheap and good shape like this one. The only work I need to do is, I already, I already ordered front brake pads and rotors. Um, I'll show you the tires. The tires are brand new in this car. Plenty of tread left in these tires. So really, for the price that these cars go for, you really can't go wrong with a 90s Mercedes C-Class. Very simple, reliable, elegant. They get good fuel economy. Uh, they're very stylish and just interesting cars. So I think they're great cars for the money. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.